Okay. All right, let's do, let's do this. Awesome. We're, we this. Hey, man, we're already rolling right now, yeah. just so you know. So since we're already rolling, what's up, honey? Hi. Great to see Love you. you. Love you so much. You ready for the intro? I'm ready for the intro. Toss to the intro. Um, honey, I brought somebody with us today. I saw it, but I'm trying to ignore it. I can't believe I saw this in the hallway. Y'all, this is Milo. Okay, so those who are listening to this, you don't get to see this. It's because- a turquoise puppet. Turquoise? Yeah. Okay. What color would you guys say this is? You- blue. I-, I was going to go blue. It's turquoise. Turquoise, okay. Like water, like turquoise water? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, this is Milo, and I don't know why I brought it here. But it was in the hallway because I just scared you. That's yes. right. We have a little puppet stand. We have a rule in our relationship where we no longer scare one another because Earl loves hiding and then just jumping out and scaring you. When you're deep in thought, when you're concentrating <laughs> on something, when you think nobody's around but you, he will just jump out of a hallway, jump out of a closet, come from underneath <laughs> a bed. So we made a rule in our marriage, no more scaring And on my way of walking down the hallway to be with y'all, he was hiding in a puppet closet (laughs) and jumped out. So I'm a little edgy right now. (laughs) I I apologize. Edgy meaning like, I don't know what it is about my brain, but if I see a good hiding spot, I'm like, oh man, this is a great hiding spot. And it has... It's trickled into the rest of the staff team. Mm-hmm. You know, Michael will try to get me. Judy. Yes. Judy's yes. got me a couple of times. My mom will try yep. to get me. I've mm-hmm. scared my mom on a number of occasions. She tries to act like she's not scared. She's like, oh, you didn't scare me. I'm like, mom, I just saw your cheeks jiggle, which yep. is probably not a good thing to say. Not cheeks jiggling. It was more like she was startled. Because, mom, yeah. you're so in shape. There's no jiggling of your cheeks at all. This is going the wrong direction. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Love you so much, mom. You're beautiful. You're an amazing woman. Your lash right here is kind of it. go. Renegade. Yeah, it's right over your yeah, eye. Yeah, you lift it up for me? Yeah, I got Thank that. Gosh. It looked like it I was burn a little bit. So we tried this thing in our relationship oh. where you guys know, some of you know, that during the pandemic, Earl was applying my lashes for me. Thank you. See, he's yeah, he's this, become a lash technician, but that thing is not. You going. can just yank it out. I mean, it won't be good for my actual uh, eyelash. No, I don't know if that's good. Okay, but it's you like might... a cluster of three. Oh, okay. Oh no, I got it. <laughs> Here we okay. go. Yep. Live TV. No, that's four. That's four lashes. Wow. Boom. Thank you. But at least not poking your eye. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So some of y'all know this. During the pandemic, Earl became a certified, bona fide lash technician because all the lash shops that do lash extensions were shut down, or I or the ones that were open on the low. I just was thinking I should probably not do that. So all that to say, he learned to do my lashes. Well, now that the world is back open again, I have a friend who does my lashes, but um, every once in a while when I'm in between fills, and girls will understand this, yeah. um, I know it's TMI for the guys, but when you're in between, it's almost like you have missing teeth. <laughs> so <laughs> um, when you're in between, sometimes Earl will apply lash extensions for me or if I can't get into an appointment. Which is difficult. So we, ha- yeah, so we had a tense moment in our relationship. It's first world, nothing major, but we just decided that I am, he's retiring from lashes. He's retiring because he's been doing it for off and on for over three years. Yeah. And we had this heart to heart about lashes. I know it sounds petty <laughs> because he wasn't feeling like I was thankful for, <laughs> for what he was doing. He, because it's true, who, what husband, what boyfriend puts on lashes? Not very many, you could probably count them on your hands. But because he had been doing it for so long, I had this standard of like, you should get it right every time because you've been doing it for three years. Yeah. And so I would pick up as he was placing lashes on me, his stress, the intensity. It became like he's at the free throw line and like all the crowds are all around this him. Is good. This is good. And like, there's the I'm opposing this. team that are going, boo, this. boo, I'm miss the this. shot, miss the I'm shot, miss the shot. I'm liking and this. so that intensity that he would have on a free throw line. Which and- I like that intensity. You live in that intensity, but, but I don't. You don't love, want that for your life. When, when your I'm starting my day, I'm trying to think peaceful thoughts and be at ease, thinking about all the things that I need to do. I'm trying to just be in my peaceful place. 
But he's like at the free throw line applying my lashes, which then was creating tension between the two of us because he didn't want to mess up. He didn't want to miss the shot. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, you make this shot all the time. Why is it so intense? Then he misses the shot and I'm in an appointment and my lash falls off while I'm in the middle of praying for someone. <laughs> so all that to say, he's retired and the jersey is now hung on the wall. Yeah. Um, no more how lashes. How do you feel about that? Um, I go a little back, disappointed. I am a little bit disappointed yeah. if I'd be... If I'd be no, honest. I'm disappointed too that it, I, I don't get to do that because it was a good moment of intimacy yeah. to be that close to you, you know, serving you, yeah. applying, you know, the lashes. So I actually liked it for the connection. Yeah. But the, ju the judgment was too much. I could he not handle like the judgment. Every time he would do a lash application, then I would give a critique of, oh, it's too far. I don't think I felt that that's what it is is <laughs> so i apply the lash and onika immediately turns and looks and she starts blinking excessively over and over and over again which again if i'm her i would want my lash to stay on who wants their so lash? why do we say all this we and how can you apply this to your life to your relationship <laughs> it's called an edit and an audit we did an audit of some things in our relationship or an edit just like you do your closet edit just like you do an audit, audit. on your company, mm -hmm. we took an overall look at our relationship and started talking about what things cause tension and stress and what things can can we not live without and what things can we just get rid of. So we just recently decided that we're no longer going to do lash application, which is huge mm -hmm. because we've been doing this for three years, but it was causing too much tension. I then, said, Onika, you know what? I know a lot of ladies they actually do this themselves. Yeah, they don't have like, the luxury mm -hmm, yeah. of and that a was, serving and even hearing you husband, say that, just being honest, that was hard to hear. Who's so kind yeah. and others oriented and Christ like, who's laying down his morning, his life for his wife's lashes. Not very many people have this. No, I'm grateful. So you lost it, sister. Yep. No more lashes. And Move but we are lose fine. It, sister. We are fine. We <laughs> still love each other, but we, we did fine. do an edit because we just decided after the audits that it was causing too much tension. So we Those said- Those are two interesting words, audit and edit. Uh, yeah, we I think every relationship, yeah. you need to do an audit. We didn't say it. We didn't call it that. But we just were the, talking. But, but that's, that's the language. Great yeah. language. Yeah. Great so we language. edited it out and we'll let you know how it goes. Um, but talk a little bit about you know how you're disappointed because again I there's a piece of me that is disappointed. How about I like we just that pour our heart out with all of y'all and just tell you what we're really going through? That's just it's very uh, it's vulnerable, it but is. I'm here for it and mm -hmm. I want to learn with y'all what we're learning because we're in this together. We are. So yeah, how do you how are you feeling? How do I feel about it? Um, I think I have that's a good question. Yeah, I go back and forth. Um, part of me is sad because it I you do have the biggest servant's heart ever. Mm -hmm. And I did, it is nice to know that I have someone right by my side who, if I'm in a crunch, can literally just give me that little extra bit of polish so I feel cuter. Mm -hmm. So I am sad about that. Yes. But I also was sad when you were on the free throw line trying to make the shot and it felt kind of stressful yeah, the tension. every time you were applying my lashes. Mm -hmm. So I don't miss that. So... Um, I wish in a perfect world, and everyone has this in every relationship you're in, you're like, I wish this person, mm -hmm. I wish that you were like, I'm just going to be peaceful while I do this. Yeah. And I'm going to just do it until I get it just right, till you're super happy about it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not the case. And you're human. And, and I'm I human. wish you were so like, just go. And oh, I'm not thankful no enough for him. No worries. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. If my lash falls off in the middle of a conversation, I don't care. And it's A-OK, -okay, which and, is, I, don't, I wouldn't want you to actually have that mindset. And something that we're navigating recently, I mean, this is all like, this is fresh stuff, y'all. Like a week ago, fresh, we're letting you in <laughs> Brand new. to our marriage vault. Like a week ago, fresh stuff we're unpacking. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't have it all together, just like you don't have it all together. Nope. And we're we're on this journey. We're trying to grow. We're trying to die to self, we're trying to be the best version. But at the same time, it does expose weaknesses. It exposes cracks mm -hmm. when you audit and you edit. Mm -hmm. And I say all that to say this fresh stuff, it's been good for us. Because we're just deciding, like, it's not worth it. It's not worth for me to start my morning off yeah. feeling tense because Earl's on the free throw line. But one of the things that we've learned together is we're working on how we both receive being thankful mm, and how good. we share and mm -hmm. express thankfulness. Mm -hmm. And what we're learning is what I think is giving thankfulness 
to it to Earl, it's not being thankful. Mm -hmm. So if I if he brings me my coffee in the morning, or if he puts on my lashes, there's something that he's hoping to hear from me Mm -hmm. that lately he feels like I'm not doing a good job of expressing it, even though I feel like I am expressing it. So it is interesting when you're in a relationship, you feel like you're giving your all, you're giving your best, but your spouse or your partner. You feel like you're giving a 10, but your spouse or your partner is receiving it as a six. Yeah. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm feeling on my side, not with a, just a gratitude, but I'm feeling like, man, I'm giving 110% about, yeah. on these lashes too. I'm like, I'm, I want this to be so right. I'm so honored to serve. And then you can feel a little bit like, well, you don't really feel honored. You don't really feel feel excited to do this. Well, it's the same thing in a relationship. If you're if you're a guy and you're giving your all to your wife or your all to your girlfriend, but they're still like, mm, you're missing the mark, but you're at level 10, but they're receiving mm-hmm. your level 10 as if it's a level six or a level five. Kind of at work too. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. they're trying to audit you and you're like, but wait, I'm giving you a 10. How are you receiving this as a five? Yeah. And then what do you do? And so that's what we are going through in our relationship. Yeah. And you were using lashes as an example, but you could use... Fill in the blank. Oh, for sure. Um, I thought I was expressing level 10 gratitude. He felt like I was expressing level two. Mm-hmm. So then it discouraged him. And so then we couldn't get same page of me trying to convince him of how grateful I was. Yeah. Does that make sense? So we just decided we edited it out. So. Well, I that was uh, to say audit and edit. I yeah. really like that language. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was again not specific. It was not scheduled that we're no. gonna do. Hey, let's do an audit. Yeah. Um, because whoever wants to go do an but audit. But I do think people that, that are very organized are like, oh, I heard them say audit and edit. I'm gonna put oh, that in my calendar now, and I'm gonna go tell my boyfriend, or my girlfriend, we do an audit and an edit every mm-hmm. third Tuesday. But it was just organic. Yeah. I do want to say this though. I don't feel like we were mad at each other. No. So that was good. I don't yeah. feel like there was a lot of um, anger or bitterness towards no. one another. So no. that's good. I think. We were able to have the conversation maybe before any bitterness might be too strong a word, but any any deep levels yeah. of like disconnection or uh, drift were able to happen because it's like you know right now it's more like an annoyance, if yeah. you will. But I think the root of it would be, and I think a lot of couples deal with this, dating and married mm-hmm. or even coworkers, is not feeling appreciated. Yeah, I think pretty much. Anyone in any type of relationship, roommates, relationship, yeah. boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, boss, coworker. Yeah. Um, what do you do in a relationship of any sort when you feel underappreciated? Yeah. And then what in turn is the fruit that happens because you feel unappreciated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. how to figure out ways, how can I make, how, what can I do or what can I say to help you really feel appreciated? Yeah. And some things... If a person's, oh, I want you to do four backflips yeah. and seven splits. It's like, okay, I can't actually do four yeah. ba- backflips yeah. and seven splits. And so what's the, another option? And the tricky part, real talk, is when you're in a relationship and you do 10 great things well. So say you have a morning where yeah. you like, you know, say I think about Cash. And so Cash who's in here with us. He's on our team and he's amazing. Um, he's married. He has a beautiful little boy. So say he has a morning. Shout out to Rowan. Rowan. Um, but say he say he lets his wife sleep in that morning. Say he says, I'm going to take Rowan to the park. You have the whole afternoon. Go get your nails done. Go get your hair highlighted. Do all the things. And then um, we'll meet back up together for dinner. But say Sunday morning, he has a short response with her. Um, that can feel, she can respond to him like, why would you say that to me? But then he's like, just yesterday I did 12 amazing things and mm-hmm. I was the best husband ever. Mm-hmm. But now this morning, because I was short with you, all of a sudden I don't even care about a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think that happens to a Those lot. major swings. There's major yeah. swings of like one minute you feel like you're doing all the things that hits the mark yeah. in that relationship. But then you have one bad day and then your spouse or your fiance yeah. or your coworker makes you feel like, what about those 10 good days <laughs> like that I had? you're the worst person Y'all know on what the I'm planet. talking about? Yeah. Y'all ever been there where For you feel- For sure you're like, yeah. okay, yeah, I did that. But I also did all these other mm-hmm. things that are yeah. pretty amazing. So now you it just makes me feel like every single thing time that I won in our relationship, it just blew up in smoke. Have we gotten too sensitive or is that just part of being human? Exactly. Which yeah. one? What do you think? Well, I think it's perspective. I think that in relationships we lose perspective of the big picture mm-hmm. of how good we really do have it when it's a healthy relationship. So oh, like yeah. if at work you you miss a call and your boss says tells you that you missed the call 
I think at the end of the day, for the boss, you have to realize like this person's intention wasn't to miss the call. Mm -hmm. This person has been there through this, this, and this. They're just having an off day, so I'm going to give them grace. But then you look for patterns in coworkers yeah. and relationships and yeah. spouses. And if there's a pattern, then it's a bigger deal than if it's like a one-off. Well, and too, you realize some things when a person does the positive thing, yeah. it actually does not fill up your tank as much as they think it ought to fill up your tank. But when they do the negative thing, yeah. it's actually a greater withdrawal. Take for it going back to me scaring you. You know, that like totally bothers you. And I so apologize, but it totally fills up my tank. But uh, you, you're you walking down the hallway. You're like, oh, that bothers me so much. And this might be a bad example, but I think that's a small thing. Yeah. But to you, that might be a bigger thing. And I think the again, the perspective of right. what's small, what's big, what has what's a bigger emotional withdrawal, what's yeah. a smaller mm -hmm. emotional withdrawal, what's going on with my family, what's going on in my own physical body, what's going on with my health, what's going on with my whatever, fill yeah. in the blank. Yeah. So you have some other things that could be happening because what's happened to us on a number of occasions is something really, really small that you've done or the kids done has really bothered me. Sure something that would not normally bother me mm -hmm. as much as it did in that moment. Right. It's because my cup was already so full. My mm -hmm. emotional tank yeah. was not, I did not uh, relieve the valve, yeah. you know, the way yeah. I needed to. Yeah. So I'm already at the top. Think of a cup of cold water, sure. you know, and the water's already there at the top. Mm -hmm. So one more drop spills that yeah. water over as compared to if it's all the way down the bottom, right. that extra little thing, mm -hmm. it doesn't bother me. I got so much more room in my right. cup. Right. Uh, I think we end up hitting that a lot of yeah. times too. So it's not even that one thing right. that was a big problem. Mm -hmm. It was all the other things exactly. that I let stack up, build yeah. up, whether yeah. it's stress at work, stress yeah. with family, yeah. stress in my own life. Yeah. I don't know. I got a DM that really bothered me the other day. I <laughs> saw so this didn't bother me at all. Uh, I'm not even on Instagram anymore. Uh, we have someone that helps yeah, him with his Instagram it. I, I because just don't it like just it. distracted him, it distracted and me it's too just much. kind of discouraging sometimes. Yeah, I just I don't for Earl. I just yeah. don't love what it feeds too much. So for for me, I'm just not on it as much. I don't poop on it at all. Celebrate it. So glad people are I doing it. I love it. just on it every single day, every single moment. Uh, I mean, I'll definitely watch a funny video every now and then, but I'm not scrolling every day yeah. anymore. I, I, I don't do that. But the other day, um, I don't know how I even saw this. I don't even know what I was doing in my comments, but I saw somebody that had a bunch of trash cans and a boo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, what is this comment? And they had done it two times. Yeah. And like it was on one, something I was saying. It was like a clip or something. Yes. And they had put like basically, boo, that's trash. Right. And I thought, I don't know this person. I did right. not click on their link. I did not do yes. any of that stuff at yeah. all. It did not bother me. Right. I'm like, I don't know who you are. Yeah. It whatever. Sure. But if my cup was at a spot where I'm already taxed yeah. and it's already filled with a whole bunch of other stuff that yeah. I needed to get out. Yeah. That, that one small thing could have put me mm -hmm. over the edge and then I come home and I'm huffy and I can't stand the kids and what's going on with you and what's happening with that. So there, there's this element, of, there's so many different aspects of it. You've got your emotional tank. Right. You got where you are that day. You got yeah. your love language. You got, do you feel like you're giving out a bunch and the other person's not giving you anything? Do you yeah. feel like, I mean, there's all these mm -hmm. dynamics that yeah. play into this. So it's not as neat and tidy but I do think there are some really simple things that we yeah. can do that can help these conversations and for these sure. moments for us to handle them even better. Exactly. One of the things for me personally, I know if I am spending my time with the Lord, yeah. I'm a better human being to everyone. Yeah. I'm better with you, mm -hmm. I'm better with our kids, I'm better at the office, I'm better with my friends, I'm a better leader. I'm, I'm, I am better if my heart and my life is more yielded and submitted and connected with Christ. So am I prioritizing that time as well? Another thing that's really important to me is exercise. Yep. I'm better if I'm exercising. Yep. My head is clearer. We talked about this a couple podcasts yeah, ago. Like how just, do you stay full yeah, when your life is full? It yeah. just really helps me so much. And those are real practicals that- They're can, really hard to do though. They are. It's and like the really simplest thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, it can end up pushing you yeah. 
you, your life can kind of exactly. swallow up these really yep. simple things that are able to keep you healthy. So I, I'll take us on another tangent. Sorry about that. No, but I think it's powerful. And this is real where people really live. Yeah. People really live in expectations. Yeah. People really live in what habits do I have in my relationship that don't need to stay. But how do you, again, how do you deal with this when somebody is asking maybe to do something that is, you feel is unattainable for you? Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, you get with a healthy mentor in your life and you say, my spouse or my boyfriend or girlfriend has this expectation of me. This is how this expectation makes me feel. Please poke holes in it. That's good. And so then that person who is a mentor in your life, who you respect, who, and I would say have a mentor or someone that you pull on, that they have a healthy relationship themselves. I wouldn't pull <laughs> on someone who doesn't have a track record of of health. Yeah. And a tra- Does that make sense? Because I think a lot of us. If get you advice. don't want to be like that person, why are you asking? Or you advice? don't want your relationship to yeah. be like that yeah. person. But a lot of times we get advice from people that we um, wouldn't want that same relationship. Totally. So agree. I would say ask someone who you respect. This is what my boss expects of me. This is what my um, spouse expects of me. This is why we talk about connect groups all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's why, is this I, that's normal? why this podcast is Is it normal good. that my wife is frustrated that I'm not doing X, Y, and Z? Mm-hmm. You know, just or, yep. or boyfriend, girlfriend. Well, take something as simple as, you know, you talked about cash earlier, diapers. Yeah. And you're a dad and, or a mom. Right. And, or I'm thinking of a couple... I mean, we have this conversation with so many couples like, oh, he's not helping with the new baby. You yeah. know, I just mm-hmm. throw that out there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not trying to put stereotypes here, but just throw that one out there. Sure. He, he's not helping, you know, with the kids. And the guy might be like, I'm totally helping. He's like, no, you're not helping. Right. So then you talk to him and go, okay, what does helping mean to you? Right. And, you know, for me, it was really important that I was like in on the diapers right. and in on the nighttime routine yeah. and in on giving our kids baths sure. and in on helping them get dressed right. and in on taking them to school. Right. And it, like, I want it to be really, really, really involved. I think there's a new generation of dads Um especially at our church, I've noticed, Mm -hmm. that are super hands-on. Yes. Like, there's lots and lots of couples. The peer pressure here is, like, present dads. Yeah. Like, the peer pressure here is, like, you see the dads that are super, super involved, holding it down, giving them— It's like a team. Like, you're. I feel like we really celebrate— for those couples that have kids together, like mm-hmm. teamwork, yep. and you see it all throughout our church. So Which if you, I love. Me too. But again, if they come to but us asking to people, for advice, but I feel like that's going to be the mentor. That's the mentoring we're giving. And it's new. I feel like you have been able to model for a ton of men in our church present fatherhood, mm. and I feel like it's shaping and changing a generation of dads who are super present, oh, who are kind. super hands on, because you're so present and you're so hands on. Wow, it's awesome okay. to well, see. That's beautiful. I mean, I guess that's Teamwork. a, a yeah, beautiful a unintended consequence yeah. because mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, I c- couldn't wait to do that. That's right. how I, but that's how we see it. You right. know, right. even when we look at scripture, we, we see, you look at God with Jesus, you see a hands-on, uh, mm-hmm. an involved yeah. father here, yes. not a disconnected exactly. father. So and it is tricky though, to um, just talking about like husbands and wives and just team parenting and all the things, because I know when I think of some relationships that I get to be a part of and just a part of coaching, mm-hmm. it's hard for if you're say you're in a season of and you're a mom and you're at home either for maternity leave or you're a mom just at home in general mm-hmm. and you're like it's a lot of work like it oh, is yeah. a full time job. Yep. And then you're a husband who's not in the house working; they're working outside of the house. I think sometimes it's tricky if in your relationship you you have all these goals where you're like, okay, I want to take this trip. I want our son or daughter to go to such and such school. I want all these lessons and all these Mm -hmm. extracurricular activities. So then you have the spouse who's like, okay, I'm going to crush it, which means I can't be home. I'm crushing it right now trying to make all your dreams come (laughs) true. I got to make a bunch of money in order for all that stuff to happen. But then sometimes the spouse is like, but you're never home. And then the husband is like, but wait, I'm trying to make all these dreams come true that you have. And that's a real dynamic that we have the honor of walking a lot of couples through. Like the pressures that you're putting on your spouse, then your spouse trying to deliver according to those things that you expressed. for sure. But then you're missing each other. Because I want to make all your dreams come true. But then it's still not good enough. (laughs) And so you're like, so it's just such a Darned if you do, darned if you don't. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's that's really interesting uh, conundrum, you know, tension that a lot of couples can live in. Yeah, and some guys stay at home. I know a couple of dads that stay at home and then the wives work. So it doesn't have to be the wife at home. You know, there's no no box. You create your own flow that works for your relationship. Yes, but with that being said, 
as um, for for us, something that has helped is trying to prioritize. Yeah. And both of you and you and I can both be feelers too. You know, we can be like, oh man, I feel like I want to do that. I feel like I want to do this. Yeah. So we we like some levels of spontaneity. Yeah. You know, in, mm-hmm. in in a lot of different areas. Yeah. So if you're sitting and we're like, hey, we want to go on a trip. A week later, we're going to be like, hey, we want to, I don't know, I don't buy my buy a, a family member a car, you know, or something, you know, I'm just throwing something random out there, a, a dream we might have. And those two things both cost money. Yeah. And they're both great things. Yeah. So it's like, okay, which one are we going to prioritize? And I think what we can end up doing unintentionally, I know we've talked about this, is we keep switching up those priorities all the yeah. time. So as a couple, uh, it's important to figure out, okay, if we can write it down and go, right. hey, we said this was our number one. Right. Are we changing that? Or, if we're going to change it to a different number one, right. we can, yeah. but that means some other energy is going to be taken away from this thing and put on this other thing. And I think that goes into regular touch bases. Yeah. Like, is this still the win for our relationship? Mm-hmm. Is this still the priority? That's why we have our agreement list. Exactly. Again, we're not the masters at this. We don't do it all yeah. the time, yeah. but we've written down this agreement list and this agreement list does give us at least some type of vision, some type of goal right. of where we would like to be. Like Onique and I have this crazy dream. We're totally and completely so far away from it, but we have, what if, and I heard this from, I think John Maxwell. Mm-hmm. And I thought, man, I want to incorporate this. We'd love to give away, give away a mm-hmm. million yeah. dollars. 10 years in a row. Yeah. Give away. Not make. Give away. I can't tell you how far away we are from that. <laughs> but very far. I thought. But I love that we're dreaming that. Let's dream like that. Yeah. God, I don't I don't know how you would ever make something like that happen. Yeah. But let's go ahead. Mm-hmm. You know, at least we put that as a target. Right. It does help inform our generosity. Mm-hmm. It helps inform how much you want to give. It exactly. helps inform that we as a family want to be a very, very ridiculously generous family. And we're trying to teach that to our kids and mm-hmm. trying to live that for each other. So when it comes time to bless someone, Onique and I tend to be on the same page right. when it comes time to bless, when it exactly. com- comes time to give, for sure. because that's one of our goals. It's yeah. one of our aims. It's a priority exactly. for us in yeah. our marriage. So mm-hmm. it really does help. We've gone all over the place on we this have. one. We have. I think we've. it's just been a toolbox conversation. Uh, yeah, I love it, though. I love it. Um, you want to keep on talking? You want to go to another? You you have something else you want to say? No, we I, get think, close I feel out? good. I feel like the moral of the story, can I wrap yeah, this? Yeah, for sure. That okay. uh, editing and auditing, with some, the audit with the edit, I love that. Yeah, that was every so work wise. relationship, every roommate relationship, every dating, engaged, marriage parenting business yeah. partners, do an audit, do an edit, and just keep getting better. I love that. I think it's so, so healthy. And don't live with a bunch of guilt. Don't shame your spouse. Exactly. Don't shame yourself. Exactly. Create a safe place yeah. for those conversations to be able to happen. Yeah. And as they do, do them with humility. Exactly. Do them with kindness. Again, we, we are people who wash feet. That's exactly. what Jesus said in John chapter 13. It's like, blessed are you yeah. when you do this. So exactly. whether it's literal or figuratively speaking, that we're say, washing yeah. feet. And two quick things that are coming to my mind as you're saying that. One is for those of you who have grown up with really strict parents or in perfectionist homes where you feel like you're always being just blown up and you can't do anything correctly ever. Maybe it was a coach, maybe it was a teacher, maybe it was a parent. So you're triggered anytime anyone audits or edits anything. (laughs) Take those old wineskins off. Take those chains of your past off. That's good. And ask God to help you hear from a pure perspective. That's really good. Not from the past 20 years of your life or 15 years of your life. We get into such performance mode. Yeah, ask the Lord for a clean slate so that you could have ears to hear. And then also recognize that your spouse, your fiance, your boss is not saying you're a horrible person. They're just trying to help you grow. Yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's really good, trying to help you grow. You said you had a second one? Those are those are two things. Those are yeah. two. Okay, yeah, that's really, that. really good. Hey, we love y'all so much. Thank you so much for being with us on the With So Much Love. Yes. You know, podcast. Love y'all. I love bye.